This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. Says I just your ass. This is my You're going to acknowledge me. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Mailbag here on the WWE Podcast for this Wednesday, March 1st, 2023. It's March. Happens like that, doesn't it? Before you know it, it'll be warm and sunny where you are unless you're already in a warm and sunny climate in which, uh, screw you, because most of us are dealing with winter. So uh, anyway, welcome to the WWE Podcast. We have four weeks until WrestleMania, and it's gonna we're gonna blink and it's gonna be here. I'd have to say that overall, my excitement level for WrestleMania is like a five on one to ten. It's it's, uh, it's very conservative right now. Maybe you're in the same boat because we don't have any real high, high profile matches. You look at even the big stars, Roman Reigns against Cody Rhodes, maybe the most intriguing because it's new. You know, the, the, there's been some good promos on in, on Cody's part, to be fair. And, there, you know, there's they're, they're doing a nice build with Paul Heyman on that. But outside of that, Brock Lesnar, okay, your big star facing Omos. That doesn't intrigue a lot of people. And then you have the uh, John's returning John Cena likely facing Austin Theory. It's like, okay, well, that's not exactly a big match, even though John Cena is going to be wrestling. Like, it just... It doesn't have a WrestleMania feel, even though the bigger stars are coming out to play this time of year. So I hope I'm wrong, and I hope that things turn around or maybe over-deliver, and I'm all for that. But uh, let's hear what you guys have to say, because that's what we're here for, not my downer of a, of a WrestleMania preview. But let's get to it. So let's get to patrons, which, by the way, if you want to get priority placement on the show become a patron patreon.com slash WWE podcast and you get to go get ahead of the line skip the head to the head of the line if that makes sense and uh, we read your emails up front so let's get to it so this is Mrs. Rocky T and she says I'm on the edge of my seat seeing tomorrow's or seeing tonight's Smackdown to see the fallout from Chamber I want Jay and Sammy to be a team so bad at this point. Did anyone notice Jay had a similar black hoodie like Sammy? He also wasn't wearing his bloodline shirt. Jay not helping Jimmy in any way makes me believe more than ever that Jay comes out to out of this predicament, a full blown baby face. Jimmy had on a plain black shirt for whatever that's worth In the back of my mind, I think after Mania, Jay turns face and we get a six-man tag with Roman, Jimmy, and Solo versus Sammy, KO, and Jay. You can't say you're wrong, but what do they do about the tag team title reign? Throw it away because Jay is just kind of leaving the bloodline? You know, there's that. I mean, they're on a 500-plus day run with those belts, and they've done a nice job of adding value to those tag team titles. So I don't know what they do. You know, I, you could be right, though. And I'm glad you brought up the point about Jay wearing the black hoodie that is that was very similar to Sammy. Kind of a symbolic coherence between the two. I, I, I saw it, and I said, oh, I'll make note of that. And I never did, so you're smarter than I am. And I'm glad you did. And, and I'm wondering if everyone out there also saw it or didn't see it and go back and watch. I mean, he wore essentially the same outfit Sammy was wearing and didn't help Jay. But... Got closer and closer to the ring. Although the answer of what would he have done if he got inside, who would he have helped, you know, whose aid would he have come to, that is the answer we still don't know. But if they turn him just back to heel, it would be disappointing. Although I'm conflicted because at WrestleMania, that is the best matchup, I think, if you're keeping Sammy out of the main event, is KO and Sammy versus the Usos. I mean... That's that's that is a better story, I think, right now than putting the tag titles on the shelf and not taking gold away from the bloodline and having Sammy be the one and Kevin be the one to take some gold away from the bloodline and seeing how Roman reacts to that. Like there is some value in that. So at the same time, Jay becoming a babyface and just leaving the bloodline is intriguing as hell. 
and Jay could come away with this from this as a big baby face. He already is right now. There's just some hesitation among fans to see where they go if Jay does turn back to the bloodline. Thank you, though, Mrs. Rocky T. Uh, let's get to who should we go to next? Let's go to uh, Seth, Seth B. And he says, I really enjoy this podcast because of the truth that is said about today's product, both positive and negative. This is also my favorite wrestling podcast. Well, thank you. Anyway, it seems as if the product has been very hit or miss lately. This might be quite poss- this might qu- quite possibly be the most underwhelming WrestleMania I've witnessed in a very long time, which has stemmed from the last minute boneheaded decisions, lazy creative and lack of star power that has been apparent for probably the last 10 to 11 years. I'd say that the only stars that make me feel something as a character right now are Edge, Rhea Ripley, Cody Rhodes, as much as I disagree with the immediate championship push, Sammy, and Roman, among just uh, among others, just to name a few, as to where the 10 to 11 years ago creative s- seemed very elaborate within their creative plans, probably because the stars available were creative themselves. I don't know. I just really would love to see another era that has everything in place and makes sense when it really hasn't since 2012 or 2013. Who becomes the next babyface star? Theory, Braun Breaker? Will they get it right this time around? And as much as I've enjoyed the Judgment Day, Edge clearly should have been the long-term focus and equivocal leader of that group. They missed out on numerous programs that could have been a must-see TV. Edge versus Lesnar, Edge versus Cody, Edge versus Bobby, etc. The character work was great and made sense long-term story-wise. Just wanted to all make sense. Yeah, I mean, Seth, I I, I feel you about the underwhelming uh, feeling about WrestleMania. I I mean, I open with that. I, I, I just, I don't feel excited about it, even though when you look at these legacy stars that have come out to play, right? You have Brock, you've got Edge, you're going to get John Cena, okay? You've got these stars, Lita, like you have the people coming back. I just, the pairings of them are not good. I mean, The Rock, once again, can't make this WrestleMania. The the rumored Stone Cold match seems like it's totally impossible at this point, even if he does show up and drop a couple stunners on Miz or somebody. Um, You know, but you're right about the edge thing, I think. Even as successful as the Judgment Day has been, and I think that they have over-delivered after the edge banishment, which I thought was a massive mistake at the time, and to some degree, I think it still was a mistake because of things they could have done with Edge leading that group, and they barely got started and then just ousted Edge, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? That was still under the uh, McMahon regime, though, not under the Triple H regime, even though some believe Vince is back in charge, and boy, this past Monday night, and the last few weeks really have been... uh, A bit trendy towards Vince McMahon, but again, this is all speculative. But Edge, yeah, I mean, what about Edge versus John Cena? What if Edge was still heel in that group and John Cena came back and the history between Edge and John Cena, and if both can still go, sign me up, man. That would have been a marquee match. Even though they're both legacy stars, nothing's on the line, it's just their history, I don't need a title on the line with those two. And if Edge was still heel, which we never really got to see play out fully, man, Edge John Cena, you could have run a video package for days on that. And the promos between them would have been A+. plus. It's nothing against Finn Balor. Great talent. Fits very well into the Judgment Day. But... We've seen it, been there, done that. It feels it's it's been about a year since Edge was banished from the Judgment Day and we're still doing this. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you're right. Edge Bobby is more exciting than uh, Bobby and Bray. And, and Bobby lately also hasn't been cutting very good promos. He's never been known to cut them really good, but he, lately they've been they've felt so manufactured and forced. I don't believe anything Bobby's saying. He, he's, I don't know what it is. He looks like a million bucks, but he just, you know, if you didn't see him and you could only hear his voice, you would not want him as a wrestler. Like if, if he was on the voice, the, the, you guys have seen that show where the, 
the panelists cannot see the person singing. They can only go on what they hear and they only will turn their chair around if they want to see, you know, if they agree that that person should move on. Bobby Lashley, if they were only doing promos, would not pass that. <laughs> okay. He's just not a good promo. I, I, don't, I don't feel it. He, he stumbles over his words and I stumble on my words all the time on this show. I'm not saying I'm better than him. It's not easy to be a promo, but the, I don't feel anything he says. I just don't. I don't believe in Bobby Lashley's promos at all, even though he is a monster in the ring and he's had a very good career. Yeah, but that's just, that's my opinion. Uh, but way, way off topic. As far as who is the next babyface star? Oh, man. I mean, Cody could be it. Cody could be if the fans don't kind of collaborate together and start to resist the Cody main event push and realize it should be Sammy's year. I think he might be that guy. Sammy could still be that guy. They've, I mean, absolutely. Sammy's in a great position, even though he was uh, robbed of a golden dream opportunity to, to take out Roman. But again, uh, everything sacrificed at the altar of a thousand days, as I have sadly mentioned over the last six months. But yeah, I mean, outside of that, Braun Breaker isn't even Braun Breaker to the casual fan isn't even a name that most recognize. I, I, I mean, really, of course, those that watch NXT know him, but the casual fan, if you were to poll people coming out of an arena of 15,000 people, I'd say a third to 40% of those people would even have heard of the name Braun Breaker. So they've got a lot of work to do if they think that Braun Breaker is going to be that guy. Uh, but I think he could be one that comes up after WrestleMania. A lot of call-ups from NXT after WrestleMania. That's traditional uh, tradition. But uh, yeah, man, I'm with you, Seth. I'm with you. And I hope we're all proved wrong. I, I hope I eat my words. I want to eat my words because I want a, I want a great event. I want a great event. I'm not rooting against WWE. I'm just calling it like it is. I'm not going to sit here like a lot of shows do and, you know, pander to the to WWE and, well, we're only going to look at the positives. No. No, we're not. Okay? We're not. We, we don't do that here. We don't just give a review of a show and, you know, just give a play-by-play. We inject a lot of opinion. And for better or worse. All right. Let's get to our next email. And this is from... Thomas Franco, you guys heard him on the Elimination Chamber review show. He's from Montreal in attendance. So let's see what he's got to say. He says, first off, I want to thank you for those that wrote in last week about our Chamber review show and talked about how great of a job we both did. Both times that I joined you on the podcast, I had a great time, and I wouldn't mind getting the chance to do it more often on a week review or something like that. Now on to talk about the product. Well, thank you, Tom. Uh, I really appreciate it. I had a great time as well. Really did. I'm really looking forward to WrestleMania. All right, see, great guys, see, see, we've, we've got we've got somebody that is completely opposing us. This is what we need. I think all the matches are really entertaining on paper instead of one in particular. Why on earth are they pairing Bray and Bobby Lashley together? There's absolutely nobody who's clamoring for this match, and there's nobody. There's no history there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the match no one asked for or wanted. That's exactly what this is. I have a feeling, and what, what's circulating though, Tom, uh, is that Bray didn't, or um, Lashley, Lashley I'll, I'll get the name right, Lesnar didn't want to work with Bray because Bray was going to go over and beat Lashley, or rather beat Lesnar. I, I can't get this straight, guys. I'm so tired. But that is the rumor that Lesnar didn't want to work with Bray because of the finish. And. Bray has not exactly shown that he is, you know, really good in the ring since his return. Let's be honest. He's had one match with LA Knight that was a gimmick match for five minutes. So not exactly a great, uh, great sample size. So I think that had some, some, some weight in it is Brock Lesnar's opinion and Brock Lesnar's preference. I do. I really believe that. So Anthony DeMarco said it's it said it best in the week in review last week. I always get captivated by Bray's content, but always finish watching it, telling myself, man, there's no substance to this, and I feel like I'm forcing myself to like it. As for Bobby, I feel like he's wasting his time in these feuds and should be in the main event title picture or at least on SmackDown challenging Gunther for the IC belt. Yeah, I mean, Bray Wyatt, 
he came back with a he he came back with a, a a blaze of fire. I was excited, absolutely. You were excited. Most fans were, and then it just got repetitive every week. We got Uncle Howdy, and we're all like, "Ooh, who's Uncle Howdy? Is it is it Randy Orton? Is it is Alexa Bliss? Is it Bo Dallas? Is it like we came up with all these things?" Then suddenly, you know, people just slowly stop caring about who you know Uncle Howdy even is. It, it probably will turn out to be nobody. I don't think the identity of Uncle Howdy is even a thing. He's just a new character, and then he's doing this meta stuff, the Firefly Funhouse, which. We we told were was dead upon his return is now back and now he's doing the muscle man dance crap again with Bobby very Vince McMahony okay this is um he's captivating and he has got that going for him and that's what's keeping him alive Bray Wyatt is the the only reason Bray Wyatt is continuing to captivate people is because he's captivating and that's not easy to do he is he's got a rare rare attribute. And he just, even if he says a bunch of nothing, he still makes you pay attention. But that can only take you so far. And I think you'll eventually hit a ceiling with that. So, uh, but you're right. Yeah, as far as Bobby and Gunther, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, I just, I, I'm befuddled as to exactly why you know, they, they put Bobby and Bray. That's like the worst combination you could think of. Bobby and Gunther, hell yeah. Maybe they're not ready for Gunther in a in a position where he could actually lose. I I, I don't know. Plus, it's the Intercontinental Championship. Like, I I don't know. I don't know why or what the plan is for Gunther. But they had two opportunities with Bobby and and uh, Lesnar to to make that happen, and they didn't. Obviously, obviously, Lesnar and Gunther would have been. You know, a match that people would have absolutely been more excited about, but apparently, maybe they're not ready for. It. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's very frustrating when you see opportunities that could have happened, and we we're not involved in the production meetings. We don't know why. There's got to be reasons. Maybe they're keeping things in their back pocket. But WrestleMania is not a time to keep things in your back pocket. WrestleMania is a time to let everything out. Anyway, all right. Also on SmackDown, we got Drew stalking Gunther as he was in the ring for a six-man tag. This had me thinking, who do you think will eventually beat Gunther for the belt? Well, Drew's a good candidate, as I just said. I didn't know who he's going to face next. I forgot about Drew because he's essentially a non-factor this WrestleMania season. Outside of just standing on the ramp, it's more than likely it's Gunther and Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. I think uh, Drew could capture it, but I think people... While they boo Gunther, respect the hell out of him. And I think they're also secretly enjoying his reign, even if they boo him, because they realize how good he is right now. So I don't know if there'll be unanimous support for Drew at um, WrestleMania, but I think it's probably uh, Drew and uh, Gunther at Mania. For me, there are realistically three options since Gunther is very close to being a megastar in WWE and has elevated the championship to a completely different level. Bobby Lashley, Drew, and Sheamus. Well, Bobby Lashley, guys, is uh, obviously with Bray. Drew is probably the most likely. And Sheamus, I don't know what Sheamus is doing. Maybe a three-way? I mean, who knows? I'd go with Drew to beat Gunther at Backlash for the rematch at Mania. And then we can move to Gunther in the world title picture where he belongs. Here's the thing. Gunther is such a great talent that you got to make sure that all your pieces are in place before you put Gunther in the title picture. And also, when you think about this, um, Roman Reigns is still champion. And I don't know when he's going to lose it. If he doesn't lose it uh, you know, uh, at Mania, then I think we're looking at another six months until SummerSlam before it's an, uh, there's a chance he could lose it. So that means that Gunther won't be in the world title picture because you can't have a heel-heel match. And you don't want to turn Gunther babyface. Not yet. So as long as Roman Reigns is champion, that takes away from the opportunity for Gunther to to be in that title picture, I think. Lastly, we have to talk about damage control. As a faction, I feel like they've lost all momentum and I'm completely tuned out as a fan. Thank God they lost the tag titles because they didn't even defend them for the last four months prior. Uh, Bailey has a great promo ability, but we never get consistent promo time for Dakota Kai and Neo Sky. 
If there's one thing I can't forgive Triple H for as head of creative, it's fumbling the booking of damage control and not putting enough emphasis on the women's tag division, uh, me, like making it an actual tag division. That's all for now. Keeping uh, putting out great content as they keep me entertained in my drives to the gym every week. Well, I'm glad that I can motivate you <laughs> while you're on the, on the way to the gym. I don't know exactly how uh, you know I'm motivating. Maybe that wasn't the point, but if I'm you know if I'm the voice of you going to the gym, then uh, have a good workout, buddy. Yeah, go all out. So. <laughs> If Triple H's biggest sin is that he didn't handle damage control the right way, I think we can all live with that. This is not his only sin. And actually, I think over the last two to three to four weeks, the creative has declined. And maybe that's because we're starting to see the WrestleMania card take shape. A lot of things that a lot of fans don't agree with. Uh, The Rock not being there. Rock Roman is not a thing. Sammy not in the main event really sours things. Bobby and Bray. People are a ho-hum about that. It's just, it doesn't have a great feel. Edge and Finn, been there, done that 400 times. It's just, it's a very, and it's interesting. This is the first WrestleMania with Triple H in charge. And so Triple H is going to be under a microscope here for better or worse. But you know, when uh, when you talk about the women's tag belts and division, I mean, I've, I've brought this up so many times. It's, 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 it's just a running joke that they just create smoke and mirrors of a tag division every single time WrestleMania season rolls around. And then you're right. They just completely back burner the women's tag team champions for months at a time. No one brings up that there's, they're even champions. No one puts up a fit that they haven't defended them. They're nothing more than just a prop on the waist around the waist of the two women. And it's, it's disgraceful. I mean, there's no other way about it. I would actually respect the decision more if he just didn't bring the back the the, uh, women's tag titles until you had a division established. Instead, they did it backwards. They introduced the championship for a division they don't have. And they still don't have. And I don't want to hear that they have one. They don't. You can't have a division where six months out of the year, the champions go unopposed That means you don't have a division and the smoke and mirrors crap that they pull every single WrestleMania season of just putting individuals together and calling them a quote unquote tag team doesn't fly because what happens is within two to three weeks, if that of WrestleMania concluding, we go back to the tag team champions being unopposed. Now, in this case, of course, you have Ronda and you have Shayna and you have Becky and you have Lita, but Lita's not here to stay. She's here for a short-term quick run through Mania, probably dropping the tag belts to Ronda and uh, Shayna. And then Ronda and Shayna, maybe will have Raquel Rodriguez and uh, I don't know, whoever else on SmackDown. But for all intents and purposes, the women's tag team titles thus far, I'd give it a, an F, not even a D. It's not even anywhere near passable the way that they've handled it. I'd agree with that. But if the only thing to you that Triple H has done is mismanage damage control, I think he's doing pretty good in your world. You know, that's that's my take. All right. Thank you, Thomas. Let's get to Mr. DJ Kuzmo. He says, this is DJ Kuzmo back at it again on your mailbag show. It is official, or maybe not yet, of a Finn Balor versus Edge match at Mania. But give the fans what we want. A Hell in a Cell match with Finn the Demon versus Edge. I'm just saying because a regular plain old match just won't do. Well, yeah, they, they have to do something. I mean, that, that's the only way. And I'm not a big gimmick guy. I like usually just straight up wrestling matches. But th- this is the only thing that's going to get me half interested in this is adding a crazy stipulation like Hell in a Cell. And maybe somebody blades. I mean, really. <laughs> I mean, for my own uh, perverse en- enjoyment, that's the only way they're going to get me to really care. Outside of the fact, though, that there are very good wrestlers. I mean, both of them, a pro's pro. I've got nothing but the utmost respect for both guys. It's just that this program has more than run its course. It's just just kind of the way it is. So, Speaking of the Judgment Day, seeing Dom, I'll just add this for you, DJ, the ex-con, on SmackDown last week talking about his mommy and then trying to sweet-talk Charlotte was hilarious, and I enjoyed it. 
Dom looked comfortable on the mic during his segment, but at times I feel like it took away from the moment of having the face off of Rhea and Charlotte because I didn't remember or I don't remember Rhea saying anything on the mic to Charlotte. Yeah, she didn't. And and uh, Rhea addressed this on, on uh, I think it was Monday Night Raw and said, I went face to face with Charlotte and didn't even need to say a word. She addressed the criticism that, you know, the face to face is uh, or was kind of a disappointment while literally she delivered. I mean, she she uh, did deliver on going face to face physically. The implication with a face to face is a promo. And we didn't get that from Rhea. And I hope we do. And I'm not talking the backstage stuff. I'm talking, you know, uh, woman to woman. That's what I want to see. I want to see her spar with Charlotte. And maybe they're they're worried that it's going to expose Rhea because she's still not on the level of Charlotte when it comes to promos. She's just not. That's okay. She's, in, you know, she's light years ahead of where she was three years ago in terms of character, comfortability, feeling like she has a spot, knowing who she is. But promo ability, promo delivery, cadence, all that comes with time. And if she spars with Charlotte, they probably are going to have to, uh, you know, uh, man- manufacture this in a way that doesn't have Rhea come off looking exposed and weak on the microphone. That's just my take. All right. So uh, this is a head scratcher of Brock Omas because technically the Brock and Bobby Lashley feud is still not over due to the finish at Chamber. I would say on paper, it's a spectacle between Brock and Omas for WrestleMania Hollywood, but I don't know how this match will perform and who ultimately goes over. I'm not crapping on the match, but in my opinion, creative should have continued Brock and Bobby uh, one more time, making it an unsanctioned match to end the feud. You know, it's funny, DJ, you mentioned that (laughs) as you were, as you were, uh, or as I was reading your uh, email, I was thinking to myself, if I had an opportunity to change out, switch out uh, the Brock Omas WrestleMania match with Brock and Bobby part four with a conclusive winner, I may pull the trigger on Bobby and Brock part four because you know you're going to get from a quality of of a match perspective, you know it's going to be a better match simply because of the limitations of Omas. I mean, he's just such a big dude. And... Sure, Omas is a you know a giant of a dude, no doubt. And the whole storyline, which I told you, is the only thing they can sell. There's really nothing else because there's no story. Is the size of Omas and Brock's never faced someone his size? Well, yes, he has. His name's The Big Show. Big Show was 500 pounds when he got at five. Okay, but most people don't remember that back in 04. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I, I, I don't know the, the, this Brock Omas thing. And again, I, I, I will continue to pound it into you guys because I want you to, I, I do hope that you guys are more positive than I am about this WrestleMania. And I hope I eat my words and you guys say, see, you don't know what you're talking about. I hope I'm wrong. I, I truly do. It's just very underwhelming right now. That's a great word to use. That's the, if you take nothing away from this podcast, just, just know, because my opinion is extremely important that I feel underwhelmed and we need to fix this. My feelings are the most important thing on this show. All right. Okay. Um, I can't say that with a straight face. Let's talk about Bobby Lashley. He now has a feud with Bray Wyatt, but I don't understand why Bray wants a feud with Bobby. It's like Bray's playing the heel and Bobby's the baby face. I don't know. I have a bad feeling that this match might turn out to be a disaster similar to The Fiend versus Orton two years ago at WrestleMania. And by the way, don't forget Alexa Bliss and that Uncle Howdy character lurking out there somewhere. Like I previously mentioned, I don't understand why Creative could have had a Brock versus Bobby at, or couldn't have a Brock versus Bobby at this year's WrestleMania. It's just bizarre to me. It is. It is. And they, they probably heard the criticisms of Brock and Bobby, so they give us Bray and Bobby? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what's the funny thing is, okay, they heard our criticisms, and I was tired of Brock and Bobby too, but the finish at Chamber left a sour taste in everyone's mouth that people are going, yeah, that was a lazy finish, it's lazy booking, and it is. It is lazy booking. But Bray just put a threat out there. He's He didn't specifically target Bobby. He just said whoever the winner is of the Brock Lesnar Bobby Lashley match needs to run. So he didn't specifically call out Bobby and uh, say, hey, I'm targeting you. He said it's one or the other, but he still hasn't provided a reason why. 
And I'm sure we'll get some gobbledygook that we have to, you know, use a decoder and, uh, you know, get the, uh, the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States to, uh, you know, weigh in on exactly what the hell he's talking about. But, uh, yeah, there. <laughs> Finally, now that Becky and Lita are the women's tag team champions and are most likely feuding with Ronda and Shayna at Mania, is this the possible end of damage control? And since their debut and return, what grade would you give them as a group based on the impact of the women's division on the main roster? So I would agree that that's probably the women's tag team title match, maybe a third team in there with damage control. But if not, then damage control should probably disintegrate. But when, you know, like when, when, when should they disintegrate? Because with Bailey being a heel, I think, you depending on what she's doing they need to have she needs them as heaters right i mean they they do her dirty work all that kind of thing so it's not just about eo sky and dakota kai it's also about bailey and what the plans for bailey are moving forward if she needs you know she needs to have a a little bit of a faction behind her to get heat and and that's the the second part of it too right of course eo kai and dakota eo sky and dakota kai kai and sky every time i hear kai and sky i think of uh kai and tai those of you that are late nineties, uh, you know, attitude era watchers know what I'm talking about. Uh, I choppy choppy your PP. All right. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, probably only like 10% of you do, uh, Val Venus. Anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole. Um, that actually ended raw one night. So I think damage control does not last. I would agree that within a few months, Probably shortly after WrestleMania, they'll be gone and Bailey will be back to maybe being solo. She could still be healed as a solo act. There's, you know, she can. Uh, and maybe that's the best thing to kind of give Bailey a refresh. But as far as a grade, it started out with like a BB plus and it's gone down to like a D for me. I mean, they, they have not done a whole lot with them and it's not even the execution of EO and Dakota. You know, they're they're just playing the cards that are dealt to them. It's just the fact that they became women's tag team champions and then they did nothing with them like they've done so many times with so many other women in the past who have won those belts. That's why I'm calling it a disgrace. Not only is it a division that's most of the time of the year outside of WrestleMania season is a, a uh, has a championship that goes uncontested, which is ridiculous and it's embarrassing. Um, you know, but you also don't do anything with them. Like they don't get mic time. There's very little character development. So this is not on Dakota and Neo. It's on creative. There's no, I mean, that's it did. It just is. I was expecting more from damage control since they debuted at SummerSlam and the trios match at clash of the castle. But since Bailey has failed to win the women's uh, championship, the raw women's championship time and time and time again, it seems to me that the group's ceiling was winning the women's tag titles, but now that EO and Dakota are no longer the champs, it seems to be left. It remains to be seen what creative does with them after Mania. Thanks for now, DJ. All right. Yeah. I mean, time's going to tell. I don't know. I do not know. So, all right. We'll get to the Veer Mahan report shortly. Let's continue on with the emails here. This is from Leon, and he says, thank you so much for highlighting the Vince McMahon style humor that reappeared back on SmackDown and Raw. I'm glad I'm not the only one that noticed this rubbish coming back. One of the biggest signs is Otis being chased by MMM, uh, Maxine, yes, despite his obvious size and look. Vince attempting irony, which always falls flat. Not good, and it's bringing the shows down as of late. Yeah. I mean, this is just us speculating that Vince is somehow still involved and they're keeping it hush hush to make the company seem like all is well. There's not there's no chaos. It's WrestleMania season. I think it's a front as well. You put a gun in my head, I would say Vince has got an influence. He's got an influence in creative right now. And they're just saving face, making everything look nice and calm on the outside, but on the inside it's chaos. And, and you know, I I that's what I believe. That's what I believe. I'm not going on anything other than my belief. Uh, but yeah, you're right. The Otis stuff with Otis now being back into a comedy character. It's the same storyline essentially as Mandy Rose and Otis, the Beauty and the Beast storyline. It's the same exact thing. And Vince was in charge of that. 
Uh, yeah, again, the humor with Bray Wyatt and the awful Brock Lesnar MVP segment on Raw that was supposed to be funny and it wasn't at all and took away from even the slightest interest anyone had in the match with Omos that Brock doesn't even take it seriously and he's just Mr. Cowboy now. Uh, you know, I, I just <laughs> All of this is very Vince McMahon-ish and it just points to him having some influence here. But that's my speculation. Okay, and I think you're with me on that. But uh, all right, my final point about the main event of Cody uh, is about Cody and Roman. Here's my hope or take on what could happen, but I may need some help filling in this some plot gaps. So Roman wins to get the thousand days thanks to interference from Seth, and he doesn't want Cody to be champ, but he also wants to be the one to dethrone Roman due to their past. This will then lead to Seth and Roman at SummerSlam. Seth wins the belt, and then him and Cody get in a program, which ultimately leads to Cody taking the belt from Seth. I think this would work, and I'm confident it will happen, especially if the Seth Logan match and Roman Cody matches are on different nights. Take care. Enjoy your week, Leon. Well, thanks, Leon. Yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. I mean, for me to go through and poke holes in the plot here, you'd have to map out how things happen for me to do that because you're giving me high level stuff that when you look up that high seems good, you know, seems great. But if you get down to the nitty gritty and go, well, this by this week and this week, this could happen. And then they do this and then they do that. It's difficult, but let me, uh, let me analyze this here from uh, my own brain, which is a not, not a good place to be most of the time. So I would agree. Roman gets to a thousand days. I'm still calling it that Roman retains at mania. And I actually have no problem with that because my God, you're, you're 40 days away or 50 days away at that point. Why would they cut short the thousand days? You're never going to be here again, probably in the modern era. And for most people's lifetimes, you know, like you probably won't have the opportunity to do, to do this. So I really truly believe they'll get to a thousand. If they're willing to sacrifice the absolute white hot Sammy Zane in Montreal, with a storybook finish to this Roman's uh, title reign that was absolutely the best possible scenario drawn up in a dream, and they still didn't pull the trigger because they want to get to a thousand. You think that Cody Rhodes coming out of nowhere from AEW, having a handful of matches in WWE, and being injured for most of the time he's been back, they're going to sacrifice Roman's thousand day reign for that? but they didn't do it for, for Sammy. I mean, I just, I can't see it. I can't see it, but, uh, okay. So besides that, Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Absolutely. Now, do I think that Seth interferes in the match at mania? That would turn him, well, that would keep him a baby face, right? But that would, well, let, let me let me look at this. So you say, you're say you saying Roman wins to get to 1,000 thanks to interference from Seth. Oh, so that would actually turn Seth heel. Okay, I read that wrong. So Seth goes back heel, and he says he doesn't want Cody to be champ, but also wants to be the one to dethrone Roman due to their past. But here's the thing. I guess the one plot hole is, that, that they haven't gone back to because it's mania and they have their plans is Cody was taken out by Seth right before Cody went to have surgery, the sledgehammer. Do you remember now? Of course the injury had already occurred and Seth just made it worse, quote unquote, but they never went back to that. So if they're going to turn Seth heel by ha- by screwing Cody, then sure then then go for it. You could have Cody and Seth, or I'm sorry, you could have, um, yeah, Cody and Seth part four, and maybe Seth actually gets a victory because Seth has lost all three of those matches prior, which is just a shame as well. But then you have to be committed to keeping Seth heel, which I think he actually, I mean, Seth being a heel is, is just, it's just, you know, easy, easy street. It's what he naturally is. So, Absolutely. You could have Seth be the one to screw, uh, screw, screw over Cody. Makes sense. But given the fact that, you know, Cody's the one that owes Seth, given what happened the last time they were together. I don't know. There's, there's a little bit of incongruity there, but I could see your point. 
Now that you said that's going to lead to Roman set at SummerSlam. That's a hell of a long way. If here's the thing, if uh, Seth does this to screw Cody to then claim in a promo in the next night that he did this because he wants to be the one to dethrone Roman, but they don't get to that match for like six months. Ooh, it's a long time. <laughs> I'd say not, not six months. If it's April, they have, okay. So say like four months. That's still a hell of a long time to talk about the match that people want to see. And it doesn't happen for four months. There's, there's too big of a gap there. Uh, but Seth wins. I'm all good with Seth winning the belt for Roman. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even care at this point. If it's not Sammy, I, I, as long as it's not Cody Rhodes, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I just don't. I'm ready for the belts to just come back home and make a appearance on Raw on a, on a weekly basis. You know, I'm ready for that. I'm, I'm just let's get to the thousand and move the hell on. That's what I'm ready for. Yeah, but uh, hey. I do love the general structure, though, Leon. That's a it's a nice uh, nice take. All right, a couple more emails here. Let's see, we've got, and I'm trying to see who this is. It's Bad Fish Music, so I, I think the I don't have a name, but that's who it's from. I just have a couple quick predictions for WrestleMania. I know it seems like a crappy way to book Sammy, but he said he wanted to bring the bloodline down. The only way to do that would be to start at the tag belts and then going after Roman. It wouldn't make sense to do it in the opposite order. So I think Sammy and KO win at Mania, and afterwards they focus on Roman's belts. Absolutely. It's just the old strategy of like an 80s villain, or even 90s movies, even today's movies, where you know you take out the henchman before you get to the, the, the kingpin, right? That's just the order of things. I totally agree. It wouldn't make sense because you want to take it from the bottom up. You don't want to cut the head off the snake and then have the whole thing crumble. It's a better story to have it happen the way that you're proposing. I agree. Second prediction, Brock and Omos match seemed off until I thought about it. Maybe Brock is about to win the match when Bobby interferes, hurt business reunion, beat down on Lesnar. I don't think anyone wants to see after this, though, any more Bobby and Brock. Even though most people would trade out if they could probably Brock and Bobby part four with an actual finish for Omos and Brock, uh, I, that doesn't mean that people in addition to this match want to see Bobby come in and beat down the Hurt Business because what's Brock Lesnar going to do? Beat down Cedric and Shelton? I mean, like it's, it's like beating up a couple of kids. You know, they're, they're no threat to Brock. And then you're going to have Brock Bobby part four. Where? WrestleMania Backlash? Okay. I don't know. Um, I would say it's in the realm of possibility, given that the Hurt Business was teased and then it just got forgotten about. It feels, again, very Vince McMahon thing to do, doesn't it? Where they tease it for a few weeks and all of a sudden it just disappears. And, and, and MVP's back with Omos. And, and Cedric and Shelton are nowhere to be found. It's very bizarre. Very bizarre. I don't say it's impossible. I don't hate it. I just don't see it likely also because Brock Lesnar goes bye-bye after WrestleMania every year. He takes like a, a, a three month vacation. Now, not always, but most of the time, that's what he does. Takes, you know, several months off, comes back, maybe money in the bank or, uh, you know, one of those big events they have, I think money in the banks in the O2 arena this year, huge, huge show. They're, they're trying to make money in the bank, like SummerSlam part two, uh, for the summer, um, which yeah, good for them. But I just think Brock Lesnar, he always, maybe he'll follow up on the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania, which is always a hot show, except for last year. And, you know, maybe he'll make an appearance, have a couple of F5s, maybe get beat down, which is the reason he's not there. But Brock usually goes away. So I don't think they're going to continue any big storyline with uh, with Brock anyway. I could be wrong. Last thing, I have a song coming out with some wrestling references. Would anyone be interested in hearing a snippet? Have a great day. Yeah, sure. I mean, send it along. Just attach it to the email. I think that'd be fun. As long as there's no, I'd even play it on the show as long as it's not, you know, a super long clip and there's no cussing. I would do it. Yeah. All right. Let's get to, uh, let's see. We don't have much more guys. I promise as far as, uh, as far as emails go, we have um, another email here. I'm searching. I'm searching for it. And this one is from Joe, uh, 
G, a GD. Oh boy. JD. Okay. Yes. And, and by the way, I know I have another patron and I just saw the message. So, um, G man, I, I know that you messaged and I will, uh, I'll get to your message next. I, I just saw it pop up, but, uh, all right. This is my first time writing in. I've been a fan of wrestling for six years. I watch all the promotions, but my favorite is WWE. I'm really enjoying this bloodline story this week on raw. Uh, I think that when Kevin Owens came out to help the Street Profits, it really signified that Kevin and Sammy are going to team up, keep up the good work. Yeah, definitely. And thank you for the compliments. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it that Kevin and Sammy are going to team up. It's just they're just just telling a story to get there. And I appreciate that. You can't you can't give the fans instantly what they want. It doesn't you know build anticipation. It's not good storytelling. Yeah, you know, so. It'll take you know another two weeks or so before they officially reunite and have that hug moment and all the respect and they stare at each other. I again, it's very Shawn Michaels Triple H reuniting in 06 to reform DX. That kind of vibe, a different storyline, of course, but that kind of reunion, I think, given their history and all that. All right, uh, let's see. I know I have got. Let's see. I I, I feel bad there, G Man. It's I hit refresh before I started this, and now I'm just seeing it. So G-Man writes in, patron of the show, longtime patron, really appreciate him. He says, so what do you guys want to talk about? Okay, G-Man, uh, maybe I'm not going to read the rest of your message. <laughs> I can't stand when Cody says that. Maybe that's why he did it. All right, so I'm going to keep it short for this week. WrestleMania is in LA, and you can't have WrestleMania in LA without the most electrifying man in WWE right now, and his name is... LA Knight. Yeah. Now, who will he have, though? That's the question. Hopefully not the damn annoying New Day, although I wouldn't mind seeing a Big E return to face LA Knight at Mania. But then you've got to have LA lose another match, so I'm struggling. What do you do with LA Knight at Mania? I think you you, you just laid it out. Yeah, have him run his mouth. Maybe New Day comes out. He runs his mouth, says this should be about him. It's his show. And uh, you have Big E come back and you have Big E LA Knight and have Big E win. Sure. I mean, the thing is, they clearly don't value LA Knight at the level that you and I and a lot of other fans do at the moment. And LA Knight's doing a great job of keep, keeping himself afloat and feeling like a big star, even though he's lost twice now. He is doing such a great job on the mic and in the ring, and an entrance, and just charisma, and just presence, that he's overcoming these losses, so I think he could take another one, sure it's at Mania, but if he's competitive, and has a great match with Big E, or whoever, I don't think he'll be hurt by the loss, because this would be his first WrestleMania, and people remember, even if you lose, they remember how you made them feel, okay, they remember Maybe certain moves or spots in the match, but the the spots and things that are in your mind are tied to emotion. And uh, I think that's going to be the most important part for LA Knight. Even in the loss, and again, he'll get there, but clearly he's not in the plans right now. But uh, yeah, thank you, G-Man. And sorry that you're at the end here. <laughs> I, I feel bad about that. Uh, all right. Well, that does it for the uh, voice or rather the email portion of the show. I'll be back tomorrow with uh, part two with the voicemails. Try not to split this into two guys. Uh, it's just kind of kind of the way it is. I've got several voicemails. Okay, it's not just one or two. Otherwise, I'd play them. Uh, several that are going to take another thirty to forty minutes to answer, and I just don't have the time this evening. So, part two will be coming tomorrow, and uh, I appreciate it for everyone call or rather everyone emailing in, and of course calling in. We'll we will get to your calls tomorrow but uh thank you everybody really appreciate it if you want to get on the show and you want to you want to write in you can do that at uh, mailbag at wwpodcast.com or you can become a patron patreon.com slash wwe podcast and go ad free or apple podcasts go ad free as well thank you everybody for listening i'll talk to you tomorrow take care Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.